Hello, thank you for joining. My name is Ryan Espinosa and I'm joined here today with Trish Alcatis. First and foremost, she is a dear friend and second and beyond, she is uh, many things, but she is a skincare guru, I'll call you. She is an energy worker, um, overall beautiful soul. So happy that you're joining us here today. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here, Ryan, thank you. Absolutely, and I'll just give a quick little brief um, Info, I guess, is your family's skincare company is Dr. Alcatis Skincare, which is all organic, botanical based skincare products that are based in or available in spas and uh, Bergdorf and those types of uh, locations. We're, in, we're not in Bergdorf, but we are in retail s stores around the world, actually. So, yes, yeah, so we're, oh. we're all over. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll jump right in okay. for our listeners because okay. um, you are very knowledgeable on skin care, body care, soul care. Yes. Um, and I think it's important for people that may not have access in New York City or other places on how we can care for ourselves. Yes. Both at home and also with practitioners and being aware of what we can do. So I think the first thing that we talked about are what kind of products can we use that if that are more generally available to us? what's in the kitchen what's in the kitchen yeah what can you get at a grocery store even something yeah. that's not gonna cost a hundred dollars something that yeah we can still be good to our skin without necessarily needing to spend all of our money on it yeah I love that question because I was actually raised very organic and um, my mom we used to reference a book called um, back to Eden when I was a child and it's basically everything about how to heal yourself and whatever you need internally or externally, whatever's going on with the body to access and use nature and plants and foods. So this is my favorite topic. So <laughs> actually, <laughs> it is actually my favorite topic because you know what we forget is that you know, all of these drugstores and all of the things that, you know, we have access to and all of these fancy products, let's say, really we've only had access to this for 150 years. Before that, all we had was nature, right? Mm -hmm. So from every culture, you know, from, you know, the American Indians, from the Asians, from, you know, all these cultures referenced all these beautiful plants. So. The kitchen cupboard, there's a lot that you can use. So there's things like, you know, when I had my adult acne and before my dad even made these products, one of the combinations that I used to use on my acne was a combination of cinnamon and manuka honey. And I would put that on as a spot treatment. Another thing that I would use was organic oats and I would grind it up in a coffee grinder and make a mask for my face that would both soothe and it does, it has the properties today. I mean, a lot of people oh, wow. use these ingredients anyway. In their but products. In their products anyway, exactly. Right. Like we have oat buds in all of our masks. Oh, wow. So that is an actual base of our mask because it softens the skin, it soothes the skin, it's very calming and it's great. Like, you know, if somebody has rosacea or eczema or, you know, any sort of like inflammatory condition and you need to soothe it, this is something that you actually can do at home mm. and it will cost just a few bucks. Um, I do recommend that all the ingredients be organic. I think that's very important. Um, but you know, those are some, a couple of, you know, tips that you can do right away. And what would you mix with that like the oats. With the, the oats? Yeah. I would I would do a mixture. I would probably add water. Again, if you want to draw something out, I would just do water because it will dry and pull something out. Mm. But if you wanted it to have a more softening effect, you could add a little coconut oil, um, a sweet almond oil, like you can make like a little bit of a paste. Uh, if you're dealing with acne, I would add a little honey. So I'd actually mix the oats with a little, again, the, you could do organic raw honey or the manuka honey, which has a lot of vital properties uh, available in it. So yeah, so it's something Perfect. super easy. Yeah. 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 Um, there's all kinds of things you can do. Like, let's say you have saggy skin. You know what you can do is you can literally just crack open an egg again, organic egg, <laughs> and take the egg white and add a little lemon juice 
and make a little mixture and you can apply that as a mask and it will tighten your skin. Oh, wow. And it will also lighten and brighten the skin. So like for hyperpigmentation, you could add a little strawberries into that because strawberries naturally lighten the skin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love hearing all these <laughs> yes. tools that we could yes. use so easily. So there's a lot, there's a lot right. available. And the thing is, is with our product line, what really makes us different from, I would say, everybody else is we are certified organic. You know, there's a lot of companies that are certified organic, mm -hmm. but we are organic, food grade organic. We mm -hmm. only use edible organic ingredients. That's it. I mean, that's our formulating guideline. My dad says that's our tagline. If you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. And it's trademarked. Yeah. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> Just it's, adding that in. Right, um, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I we mentioned earlier our skin is our largest, the largest organ. Largest organ, exactly. Yeah. So you know, basically, you know, it's very important to my father to use ingredients that can actually be edible. Oh, okay. So um, we only use edible organic ingredients, and so because of that. I've done a lot of research about all of the ingredients and that's how I, you know, it's so second nature because basically when you're buying our skincare, it is the closest thing that was made in the kitchen. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think there's the fact that a lot of your products can be literally eaten Yes. is a testament and it's a litmus test in a way for other, oh, other companies, you know, if you are going to put something on your skin yes do you feel comfortable eating it exactly if you don't then you should not be putting that anywhere near your skin or body exactly because it's going to get absorbed into your system anyway this is exactly right right this um, is exactly <laughs> right and in fact can i just expound on that a little bit yeah. because for many many years the beauty industry specifically the conventional beauty industry said that that wasn't true, that it doesn't penetrate below the first couple layers of your skin and you don't need to worry about the conventional mm. chemicals. And now that I, I think it's been about 10 or 15 years that we've had trans epidermal patches and we can no longer say that because the minute you put the patch on, it is absorbed into your bloodstream. Right, so you have nicotine patches and all these other That's patches right. that are, are birth, out there. Birth control, medication. So yes, so that changed the whole name of the game. Like mm. that is no longer, um, you know, that's been exposed. Right, So and it's, it's prescription, so it's obviously. That's right, right. that's okay. right, yeah. Um, and we had mentioned earlier, and I, I do want to touch on some of the in addition to the products we had talked about, because I know we're in general the conversations around rejuvenation yeah. and what we can do ourselves that help us to rejuvenate our body on a daily basis. And yes. you gave some techniques yes. that I would love for you to, okay. again, ex expand upon. Okay, one of my absolute favorite things to do, and I've been doing it since I was 14 years old, is dry skin brushing. It's so vitally beautiful for the skin. And what you do is you take a kind of a stiff, dry brush, you know, those natural brushes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and basically what you do is you start at the bottom of your feet and you, you work your way up. So you're taking the brush and you're just like doing these movements, these long movements all along, you know, cause we have lymphatic nodes all along our body. So there's mm. these lines and we also have, you know, all kinds of energy lines, right? So basically what you wanna do is you wanna start from the bottom of your feet and all the movements are coming up towards the heart. Mm. And so you start at the bottom of your hand and again you go up towards the heart. That's the movement front and back. And for myself, when, I, when you get down to the stomach, you go in a clockwise position mm. with the brush. And again, around, uh, let's say the hips and the buttocks, I go around a clockwise Close. position. And I have no cellulite, I'm proud to report. <laughs> and it really does break down the cellulite. I mean, it really kind of, you know, it, it basically is moving all the energy. It's creating fresh blood and oxygen flow. It's naturally detoxifying. Again, the skin is the largest organ. So you are exfoliating, you're opening up the skin, you're detoxifying it. And it's a really beautiful way to start the day. It's a beautiful practice. And it doesn't have to take more than five minutes. So right. that's how I start. So you do that dry. And you'll notice that when you first start, your skin may feel a little tender. 
but as you go do it every day, your skin starts to tone. It will naturally tone and tighten the skin, which we care about when we start to age, right? right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we want tight toned skin. And then, um, and then you take a shower, and after that, on damp skin, well, I massage in the nourishing treatment oil, which is one of our products, which is really beautiful, mm -hmm. and has a lot of Ayurvedic-inspired ingredients, so very um, therapeutic, and it smells delicious. So that's what I do. And for the face, I love to start the morning with a facial massage. I think it's so vitally important to massage our neck and our face, especially starting with the neck because we're all on our phones, we're all at the computer, and we're really shortening these muscles in the back of our neck. Mm -hmm. And that actually starts to pull down the face and create sagging. So one of the fastest way to release the uh, muscles in the face is to start massaging the back of the neck mm -hmm. to really give, to you know break right. that, um, those stresses those stressed muscles apart and give energy and oxygen flow in there and then I will do like a five to ten minute facial massage every single morning I love gua sha um, so can I name a couple of links yes absolutely and okay. maybe you can spell them too just so that people can know how to if you know how to spell them <laughs> okay I'll try to remember okay you'll so, be close enough <laughs> so there's so if for just regular facial massage like if you keep it super simple and somebody can use like a really basic oil like a, a really nice uh, organic sweet almond oil okay yeah and you you had mentioned like four different um, oils that were in general were relatively in, yes good in for us, general please. if somebody can't afford to buy like you know our products are a really nice other upscale product the four most uh, accessible products and healthy for the skin again always organic but I would start with sweet almond oil mm -hmm. is really beautiful for the skin uh, uh, coconut oil is really nice. I'm not a fan of coconut oil on the face though. Um, Yahoba oil is lovely. Olive oil is really mm. nice. And also sesame oil is really nice. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They do that. They use that for a massage in India. Basically from the minute a baby is born, they're massaged every day with sesame oil. So those are the, the really nice, good oils that you can use. Um, if, but for the facial massage, I would probably stick to the Yehova or Sweet Almond Oil mm -hmm. the most. Mm -hmm. And for the facial massage, somebody who I like to watch a lot, she has a U great YouTube channel, and her name is, can I tell Guasha? you? Guasha? No, not the Guasha. No. Um, um, yes, you gave me her name. Um, Abigail, Abigail James. James. Yes. Abigail James on YouTube, and she is a celebrity master esthetician who lives in London, and she actually helped create one of our uh, facial treatment protocols. You, it's a lifting lymphatic drainage facial, and one time she did this treatment on me when I was in London, and I literally just got off a plane, and I had to step into a press conference and speak to 20 press members and give a lecture, mm -hmm. an hour-long lecture, and I was, you know, I was finished. I was so <laughs> tired. And um, the woman whose spa we were doing it in, who's one of our distributors over there, she said, Trish, I'm going to give you facial. Literally, half of my face was lifted. Like, they showed me the difference before they went from one face to one side of the face to the next. Right. And one side literally li lifted by half an inch. So the power of massage is huge. Like, yeah. It's not big here in the States, so I like to talk about it because, you know, we have, we're coming from this um, generation that we just immediately go to fillers and Botox and we do these very aggressive and unnatural things and I think that should be the last thing that we do because it's not really, we're all aging, we're all getting older. So, every day. So, every day. <laughs> so, you know, do we want to age gracefully, beautifully, health? in a healthy manner or do we just want to resort to all of these artificial things that you know what I mean that like, are very invasive they're very invasive and they're yeah. not holistic minded and they're not really a high vibrational experience mm -hmm. or of high vibrational frequency 
Right. And so I like to encourage people and to let people know that that's available. A lot of people right. don't even know. They, no. they, don't, they would never know that you're, you could really lift your skin up by massage. Absolutely. Because it's all part of our culture. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Very much in our medical system as well. It's kind of exactly. aligned with that. That's right. And another link, if you have access to a gua sha tool, which is also a practice that comes from Asia, and I, I'm, I don't recall if it's from Japan or where, where exactly, if it's Korean, but it's an Asian practice and it's using a small flat stone and mm. you can do beautiful lifting techniques all, again, for mm. the neck and the face. And also in Asia, they keep this on a string in the shower and you can do it on other parts of your body where there is um, trapped energy and where you, you get tight. Um, but uh, Treatment by Lan Shen has a beautiful YouTube, uh, instructional YouTube mm. video series, and she has a great place in Brooklyn. And, and how do you spell her name? Treatment by Lan Shen, so it's Treatment by, and I think it's L-A-N-S-H-I-N. Got it. Okay? okay, and she is in Williamsburg, Sandra Lan Shen, is her name, mm. and she gives really precise, gorgeous tutorials that oh, I fantastic. highly recommend. And you can really see the difference. Like sometimes she'll come on in the morning and she'll be like, see, my eyes are puffy, watch. And then she'll do this tutorial, wow. and by the end you can see that she totally decompressed the whole area and lifted. Wow, yeah. and it sounds like from your experience and from what you, we've shared, what you've shared, there's a lot of other cultures that are much more engaged already with but, a lot of these skin skin self-care practices. I, oh, totally. Right. Starting from the Egyptians. I mm -hmm. mean, they were the first people to use essential oils and, you know, use all of these beautiful um, ancient... Every, for me, gosh, before I even got involved in the beauty industry with my father, I was always fascinated by spas like I just had this thing that I just wanted to travel the world and, <laughs> and go to and review spas yeah oh and, wow and, and that's good like, yeah. I, just, I, I have, childhood goals exactly <laughs> I had, this was my fantasy I thought yeah. that was the dream job <laughs> and then when I got older when I got into the spa industry and I saw how it operated and particularly around products because it's like you'll have this gorgeous environment and then they'll be using products that have nothing to do with nature There'd be mm -hmm. lots of chemicals and nasty things that don't really reflect real nature. But to me, you know, a true spa should be really reflecting of nature. And that's really what all these cultures did back then. I mean, mm -hmm. again, they were only using plants. Right. That's all we had. Right. You know, like... Right. And how, so you didn't have and a dermatologist to go to, like, oh, you have to do this. This is in your realm. That's and right. using these plethora of products when you're in a store when you're in a place like what do you get and you look on the back and it's literally 90% of chemicals exactly exactly yeah and so we've gotten so disconnected from nature it's so, something started to happen you know where people started to think that the chemicals worked better than nature right. mm -hmm. and the truth is it's the opposite <laughs> right. but you know especially if you know what you're doing right not not everybody knows what they're doing um we're very fortunate my dad has a phd in physical chemistry so he's a scientist he's mm -hmm. a research scientist but he's also an ethnopharmacologist and that's somebody who studies indigenous cultures around the world and how they use their plants to heal their diseases Mm, oh wow, fascinating. Exactly, so he has the, syn the synergy of those, both of those aspects, so he really understands the chemical reactions between plants. Wow. Right. Yeah, and that's baked into all of the product exactly. line. Exactly. You know, not to plug it too much, but I yeah. love the products. So I glad. use the oils and, the, and I get compliments all the time with the smell and Yes. As soon as people are around, so I you you notice the difference when you're using a natural product. You do versus using something, and I think you touched on that earlier, which is an easy way to test a cream or an oil yeah. for your skin, which I think was brilliant, and it's a good thing for people to know. So yeah. I'd like so, you just to go through that. Yes. So um, what you know, he you know, when I was 
using other products and kind of evaluating them throughout my career and you know always oh how is this and how is that and he said I'm gonna break it down and give you a very easy way to test if this product is synthetic based or if it's a natural based product and basically you can just put a cream or an oil on your skin and if it's not getting absorbed it's chances are it's a synthetic based mm -hmm. or synthetic ingredients are in there so it's giving a false sense of hydration and you know what you really want is you don't want something to just sit on top you want something to really penetrate and nourish the skin internally and externally right right yeah. absolutely because it all really originates internally so we're exactly. talking a very that, topical conversation at this point that's but. exactly right and you know you felt that like have you ever felt that where you've had you tried those like um you know, like those hand lotions that like... Or even lip care, exactly. if it's laying on the top of exactly. it, which is probably what I'm wearing right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little glossy, <laughs> I know. But that, you notice, otherwise it just kind of seeps in, but exactly. that's intentionally, that's what you're wanting, mm -hmm. is your body is absorbing it easily, and you're not Correct. price. It's kind of more, otherwise it's very much more synthetic oil-based. Yes, Yeah. exactly. So we also touched on, in our short amount of time, we're trying to keep this short for everybody. Yes. I want, you touched on some things, and I think it's really easy um, in a Western culture for us to get talked through this quickly, okay. on what we do wrong and what we can do instead. Okay. So you had mentioned a few things that we do wrong in general, such oh, as yes. over exfoliation yes. and drying. And so if we can touch on some of those things, because I think it's... Um, it's in our at least U.S. and Western nature to battle some of our skin. That's right. To get the end result that we want. That's right. And your approach is quite different. Exactly. So when I came in to working with my dad 27 years ago, I had cystic bleeding acne from cheek to cheek. And that was hardcore. And there was no wellness blogs. There were really hardly any skincare lines out there. So I was really on my own to try to figure my skin out, and it, it was a long battle. And you know, one of the things that happened was I went to the dermatologist, and they wanted me to go on Accutane, they wanted me to do microdermabrasion, they wanted me to do mm. chemical peels. Wow. That's all very invasive. And harsh. I harsh. actually did Accutane. Okay. Three times. Oh, okay. When I was in my young 20s. I didn't know any better. And you're yes. right. There were no places for us to go yeah. learn. And That's I did right. know you were told kind of of the harsh side effect. And I was having, I had to be pulled off of it. Yeah. At one point because my liver couldn't handle it. I was just going to say, I want to drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that they right. basically mm. say that it can really kind of hurt your liver very it can hurt badly. Your liver, yeah. And they give you a seven year do not get pregnant oh, wow. window I didn't know for that. each treatment. And it adds some depression, which you, yes. you do notice when you're on it. I, I noticed it at least. Yes. So yeah, it's extremely harsh. Very harsh. Yeah. And so is a chemical peel. And so is microdermabrasion. Right. So I had a discussion with my father. I decided not to do any of it. So, and my skin was bad. I didn't go out of the house for two years. I had a lot of shame around having this problematic skin. And you can see my skin now, and I, I Gorgeous. did nothing. So thank <laughs> yes. you very much. And you know, I basically, he sent me a couple of products. He actually sent me the soothing gel was the first product that I started to use. And then after that came the nourishing treatment oil and then the cleanser. So mm -hmm. that for the first year, I used those three products. And so the oil is really what ended up healing my scars. So this long story short, because I was using a couple of other products that was drying out my skin because I thought that that's what I was supposed to do. Right. And that's what you, that's the conventional wisdom. You want to dry right. it out. Dry it out. Let's battle it. Let's fight mm -hmm. it. Let's take it off. And so I was doing all of that and I was really creating more oil production, my skin was getting angrier, everything was getting so much worse. And I was beside myself and all of a sudden, intuitively, I started to work with that oil in the evening because I was too oily in the day. Mm -hmm. And intuitively, I started to work that oil and the results were magnificent. Basically, in Ayurveda, oil cuts oil. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what happened is I'm giving it this beautiful, nourishing, 
therapeutic oil and it's calming and soothing and everything is just getting under control in a way that I, it was just amazing. The results were amazing. So I really am living proof of that whole story. Wow. So yeah, so what I noticed, you know, we just did that event a couple of weeks ago. You mm -hmm. came to my event and you know, it was a pretty older crowd. There were a lot of beautiful ladies there over the age 40 and they all came up to me and you know, had, how can I exfoliate? And I said, why do you want to exfoliate? And they're like, well, I have hyperpigmentation, you know? And also because I'm told that that's what we should do when we're getting older. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nothing to me, nothing could be further from the truth because- and scraping and like that's scratching right. yourself. You're basically taking off your natural oils, right. you're dehydrating your skin, and everybody loves to over exfoliate. Nobody's just doing it once or twice a month. Right. They're doing it every week. Mm -hmm. And nothing makes you look older faster than mm -hmm. like just nourishing your skin and using a beautiful cream or oil. Yeah. <laughs> so I do really, really recommend working with a gorgeous oil. It doesn't have to be our oil, but any of those other oils that we mentioned earlier, like Yehovah or Sweet Almond Oil, just use that. So I can, and I love or, that you really gave that contrast of nourishing. Yes. Focus on nourishing yes. your skin. Yes, calm, nourish. Make peace with what is something, listen, all acne, usually acne is a symptom of what's going on in your intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Right. Okay? Yeah. So if you really want to address what's going on with the skin, look at what's going on inside because that's it, It's that's the connection right there. Right, what and you're eating, what you're... What you're yeah. eating, what, you're, what are you doing, what are you eating, what are you ingesting on a daily basis? Something is happening. Your body is reacting. That's right, it's yeah. a state of inflammation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in Asia, there's these beautiful, you know, all along the lines of acupuncture, there's a map, we have a map uh, of our face, a skin map. We have a map of our hand. We have a map of our foot, right? There's foot reflexology. Mm -hmm. yep. um, you know, and these maps, you can kind of start to locate where the acne is. Like usually along the jawline, that's more hormonal. Usually around here on the cheeks, it's related to the lungs. So literally, you can go and look, pull it up on, you know, YouTube or whatever mm -hmm. and start to kind of get in touch with what's going on inside. Right. So we don't have to be so passive and like, oh my God, I have a, a pimple here, gotta get rid of it. How about be inquisitive and try to understand what's going on inside why you have that pimple. Exactly, right? which is what we're not taught, is That's looking right. at our bodies as a holistic aspect. If, am right. I sick? What are How can the influences of this that are yes. allowing or that are creating this? Yes. Yeah. And how can I empower myself mm -hmm. and take control over my health and not just continually put myself in the hands of allopathic medicine? Exactly. Right? Which is what we've been part of the culture for so long. Exactly. Right, which is... Exactly, yeah. and which is why, you know, I referenced that book when we first started because at a very young age, you know, when I was at like five years old, you know, one time I got sick or something happened and, and I said to my mom, you know, I don't feel well, and she said, come with me and you see this book, this book teaches you how to do everything by yourself. Mm. And we're gonna become like little witch doctors. <laughs> and you know, I know that sounds weird, it. but you know. That was fantastic. Hippie, hippie, Not everybody... hippie intellectual parents here. <laughs> I know, I would have appreciated hearing some of that. So give us yes. the name of the book one more time. So it's called, so it's by um, Jethro Kloss, and it's called Back to Eden. Mm. And you know, basically for every ailment, and I think he wrote it in 1930s, so it was very progressive. Wow. Yes. And he wrote it, and he almost died of um, lead poisoning, uh, not aluminum poisoning, because back then he was all, he was a farmer, all organic doctor, but he was cooking in aluminum pots. Mm. And he's the one who made that aluminum connection. Oh, wow. Of how detrimental aluminum wow. is, and it causes all kinds of so who knows what we're using now that's, that we'll find that, out in 10 years. Right. So go back to plants that's right. but, <laughs> and so, nature as much as we can. Exactly. But you know, that's what my mom, basically what I'm illustrating is at a very young age, my mom taught me, she empowered me to take control over my own health. So, mm. and not be afraid of it. 
So I think that, you know, that's the key here is to get really comfortable and feel like we all have the power to take control of our health. Absolutely. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Trish. I'm You're sure so we could welcome, keep talking darling. for hours and days, <laughs> as we always do, but we I do. really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Ryan. This was today. so much fun. It was an absolute pleasure. Yay. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.